Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an absolute value equation. The equation, the absolute value of, the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 4 equals a has three solutions and we're going to find the value of a or the values of a. So when you have an absolute value equation, as you know, suppose you have the absolute value of x equals 5, then we can come up with two solutions from here. Right? We can say, okay, x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. So there are two numbers, in other words, whose absolute value equals 5. So let's go ahead and look at this equation from that perspective. A is unknown, so this is a parametric equation, and we're going to be finding the values of A such that this equation can have three solutions. So let's go ahead and split this equation up into two pieces. So using the, the outside absolute value, I can say that either the expression inside the absolute value equals A, or the expression is equal to negative a. Okay, so let's go ahead and proceed. This is gonna give us other absolute value equations. So we're gonna try to solve this equation and then later on, after solving the problem, we're gonna look at it from a graphical perspective. So I'd like to give you both perspectives because I think the graphical solution is also very interesting. And it also gives you more information, obviously, about this equation in general. So let's add four to both sides. That's going to give me a plus 4. And this is going to give me 4 minus a, or you can write it as negative 4 plus a. Uh, I was supposed to write 4 minus a. I got, I confused myself. Okay. So we get these two solutions. So as you know, if the absolute value of e something equals something else, then we split it up into two solutions. And we have two branches now. So it's supposed to bring us four solutions, two from each branch. But we do want three solutions. So how is that possible? Well, the exception here is if the absolute value of x is equal to zero, then that only gives us one solution, x equals zero. So that's what we're going to use. Suppose this is equal to zero. Now, what happens if that's the case? If, so we're going to look at it case by case. First case, if, if a plus four is equal to zero, then we get one solution from there. That's nice. This means that a is equal to negative 4. So if a equals negative 4, then I get x minus 1 equals 0, or the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 0, but this only gives me x equals 1. So that's one solution. The other one gives me the absolute value of x minus 1 equals 4 minus a, as you know from here. But if a is equal to negative 4, substitute and you're going to get 4 minus negative 4, which is 8. Now this gives you two solutions. You can say that x minus one is either eight or negative eight, because there are two numbers whose absolute value equals eight, eight and negative eight. From here you get x equals nine, and from here you get x equals negative seven. So it looks like we got three solutions, right? So can we safely say that a equals negative four? No, you can't. Why can't we say that? Because if you go back, you'll notice that the absolute value of something, if you, you'll notice that the absolute value of something equals a. So we have this requirement. a needs to be non-negative, which means a is greater than or equal to zero, right? Well, what happens in that case? Well, a equals negative four is not acceptable. I can't take this value, therefore, that's not the solution. Let's go ahead and look at the second case, where we have this expression equal to zero, which is four minus a, okay. If 4 minus a is equal to 0, which means that a is equal to 4, then I get the following. The first one becomes the absolute value of x minus 1 equals, you know, I'm going to change it, doesn't look good. The absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to a plus 4. If a is equal to 4, this is going to equal 8. From here, I get x equals 9 and x equals negative 7 as before. And then if you use the second one for the absolute value of x minus 1 is equal to 4 minus a, which is 0, from here I get x equals 1. So I get three solutions for this equation, and a equals 4 is a good value. So this means that a equals 4. Make sense? Okay. So a equals negative 4 did not work because if you substitute that into the original equation, we get something that doesn't make sense for absolute value. Of course, we're talking about the absolute value of 
real numbers. Even if you find the absolute value of a complex number, it's still going to be non-negative. So is there something whose absolute value is negative? Something to think about. Okay. So anyways, the value of A from here equals 4. Apparently, there's only one possible value for A for which we have three solutions. But this equation could also be asked differently. So they could ask something like, okay, if this equation has no solutions, is that possible? If this equation has two solutions or four solutions. So in order to be able to explore uh, more, like in more general uh, terms, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this function. So that's going to bring us to the graph. And here we go. This time, I'm not cursed with the graph because this is done on purpose, right? I do need this graph. So the red one that you see here is the graph of the absolute value of the absolute value of x minus 1 minus 4. So that's my function. As you know, the absolute value graphs are v-shaped. For example, if you're looking at the graph of absolute value of x, which is the parent function, which is the most simple one, it's going to look like this, right? For x, uh, when x is positive, it's going to be y equals x. When x is negative, it's going to be y equals negative x. Simple. But this one has uh, more um, sharp corners because it has uh, two absolute values. Make sense? Okay. If you have more absolute values, obviously, it's going to be broken even more. But so this is my function. What am I trying to do here? By solving, you know, this equals a, I'm basically looking at two functions here. One of them is this absolute value function, and the other one is y equals a. But what is y equals a? Well, from analytical geometry, we know that it is a horizontal line whose x value can be anything, but its y value is always going to be a. Okay, great. So this is a horizontal line. So I'm going to be drawing horizontal lines and see if I can get some solutions. For example, this is going to be a horizontal line, right? Well, it's not. Yes, here we go. Yeah, think, thanks to uh, notability, we can make it a horizontal line like that. Well, pretty horizontal, you know, just go with that. So as you can see here, my line, something like maybe y equals 1, good enough, will have four intersection points. So in other words, if a equals 1, because y equals 1 means y equals a, so that means a equals 1, a equals 1 gives us four solutions. Awesome. But we were looking for three solutions, remember? How can we get three solutions? Well, if you cut it here, let's say a is equal to 5, okay? If a is equal to 5, then you're going to get two solutions only, this one and this one. Is it possible to get Is it possible to get uh, three solutions then? I'm, I can get two, I can get four. If you stay in between, of course, why not, right? So you have to cut here at exactly a equals 4 or y equals 4. So here we go. This is our, and we can make it a little, make it more stand out, right? This is our special line that works, and here we go. Okay. Great. So this shows us that the line y equals 4 is going to have three intersection points with the absolute value function. Therefore, we will have three solutions to this equation. 4, a equals 4. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.